How's it going everyone, it's Gadgets Boy, welcome to another video. In this one we're going to be talking about Extended Reality or XR. Now, MWC Mobile World Congress is the largest mobile event of the year. It's where we see the launch of new mobile and connected devices launched. But as the world of mobile evolves, we begin to see new forms of mobile computing and XR or Extended Reality is a key point in that timeline. I spent some time at the Qualcomm Technologies Inc. booth to find out more about the work in the XR space, including powering devices enabling the metaverse and more. I also caught up with Hugo Swartz, who's the VP and GM of XR and metaverse at Qualcomm. I'm uh, Hugo Swartz. I'm uh, the VP and general manager for uh, XR. Qualcomm is a world leader in the mobile computing space and its Snapdragon XR platform is powering some of the VR, AR and MR tools that we see today. And Qualcomm have a vision for what's next, a convergence of technologies under extended reality or XR. XR is an umbrella term encapsulating augmented reality, so AR, virtual reality, VR, mixed reality, MR, and everything in between. Today, AR and VR are distinct experiences but they share many of the same underlying technologies that will power revolutionary XR experiences as AR and VR eventually converge into a new type of wearable device that's capable of supporting both. It could even take over from your smartphone, your VR goggles that you already use at home, and just imagine a world where you can wear this one piece of technology, this hardware on your face, and you'll be able to do things like watch a movie, or do some work, or just do some educational elements in the virtual space, whilst being aware of what's going on around you, as well as doing things with your hands and not controllers. Of course, with any tech, you'd always face some form of challenges, and this is no different. So actually, XR, we use it as an umbrella term that spans across the reality spectrum. Right? So you have a virtual reality where you are fully immersed you know, in an occluded type device. And uh, the, the Meta Quest 2 is a great example of a product that has uh, gained a lot of success, uh, both for gaming, for social experiences and, uh, and fitness. So that's one side of the spectrum, so virtual reality. The other is augmented reality, where you have uh, your glasses and then the digital information, the digital life come on top of the real world. So we're still early on AR. In AR, um, we see more of uh, enterprise business applications uh, that are using you know, products like the Microsoft uh, HoloLens or other more industrial type applications. So, but that's the future. You know, once you get um, two glasses that make uh, the screens that we have today, smartphones and PCs, really disappear, that's the future. That's the future where uh, virtual and physical just merge. Trying out a sample headset, you can really see the possibilities with the way you're able to interact with the virtual world whilst remaining aware of what's happening around you. And you can even potentially interact with the same content collaboratively with another headset user. And the use cases are endless from education to hospitals. So in the medical world, you look at retail and even remote collaboration. Uh, in enterprise, you know, we start to see amazing applications like in the medical field for things that you wouldn't imagine, like stroke rehabilitation, now being able to have physical therapy type exercises using a VR headset. I don't need to go to a clinic now um, to do the exercises, you know, to get me back on my movements. I can do that in virtual reality. So that really amazes me how much, you know, virtual reality, augmented reality are helping, you know, just uh, us in health, um, in education, uh, Corporate training, that's another big one. Uh, I don't know if you, you know, were aware, but in US, all Walmart employees are trained uh, uh, using VR before you know, they go and, and work the supermarket. So that's you know, another great uh, uh, case. Now, when you look into the consumer side, um, things like fitness, you know, have you played uh, Beat Saber? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a game, yeah, but you do a lot of exercise on, you know, uh, with, with games like that. And, and we start seeing, you know, fitness type applications become more, more popular. For XR to work seamlessly, you need a powerful processor to make them work properly. 
You need the 5G for fast data connectivity. The hardware needs to be fashionable, lightweight. The graphics in there needs to look really good. There needs to be low latency. The UI also needs to fit in with what you've envisioned. And this is where the Snapdragon XR platform comes in. Of course, you need the devices, right? Or headsets that enable you to be inside the internet. And that's uh, essentially you know, virtual reality, augmented reality headsets. And Qualcomm today has the leadership when it comes to having the processors, the chips um, that support those devices. More than 50 devices already uh, uh, were launched using our Snapdragon products. Uh, so we have uh, two lines of chips, you know, a processor, XR1 and XR2, but that's just the beginning. You know, the, the chip is something that, you know, we do, we have many devices out there, but beyond that, we also have technology. When you think about um, the metaverse and when it think, you know, having, imagine, you know, your avatar, you know, your avatar needs to mimic all the movements. You know, if I'm, you know, moving my hands, you know, how do you, how do you put that in the, you know, in the metaverse? Well, you need to have tracking mechanisms, you know, facial tracking, environment tracking. So Qualcomm has the technologies to enable that. And then, um, so I talk about the chips the technology. We also do something we call reference designs. Like we don't, you, you don't see a Qualcomm or Snapdragon based device, but what we do is a kind of a blueprint of a device that then we have our customers, hey, you wanna go to market with your device? Why don't you start here? Uh, so that's the third component. And the fourth component, which is something we announced uh, last November, is we're creating a developer platform. Meaning you are a developer and you wanna create applications for the metaverse. What do you use? You know, today there's still a lot of fragmentation. So we created a new developer platform we call Snapdragon Spaces. So with Snapdragon Spaces, developers can create this uh, spatial um, uh, apps. And um, so that's kind of, a, you know, the, the, the spectrum of things that we're doing from the chips, the technology, reference designs, and now, uh, going directly, you know, supporting developers. I tried another pair of Snapdragon XR platform powered headsets and my virtual world is projected in front of me and multiple realities were created from a movie theater to uh, education platform for learning and even a room I can enter and just work out if I need to like my home gym. Think about it as having a house with multiple rooms and you can create as many rooms as you wish to do so. Metaverse is obviously a popular term right now with so many people still trying to define it, but it's here and Qualcomm is playing a vital role in this area, especially when it comes to the hardware side of things. Now, when talking about future, of course, I cannot miss talking about the metaverse, right? Or, or us, you know, having our digital lives, you know, be in this virtual environment, you know, the way, you know, we, we game and we play and we entertain ourselves where we, you know, are represented as an avatar, but not necessarily a cartoonish avatar. Really, you know, an avatar that looks like we do. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, you can have interactions with people across the world, but having the feeling of presence, having the feeling that, hey, we're together in this environment. So I think that a lot of uh, uh, use cases that are being discussed, you know, in the concept of the metaverse um, have no doubt that's, uh, that's the path we're going towards. What Qualcomm is doing in the XR space is very interesting. And I can't help but think and feel like that minority report scene is becoming a reality. And I for one can't wait for when I can do away with my smartphone and VR goggles to have a convergence of all these techs into one single hardware that I can wear on my face and I can game, work, have meetings with people on there from around the world and also learn. But over to you though, let me know what you think of extended reality and what Qualcomm's up to. And also let me know what you think about Metaverse as well. How do you define it? Drop a comment below. If you wanna find out more about the Snapdragon XR platform, links will be in the description area for you guys to find out more and read up on it if you wanna do so. If this is your first time around here, please do subscribe and smash that bell notification as well. So you get notified every time there's a video up on a channel like this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.